Love came down at Christmas. Love, a oh lovely love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. shall be our token love be yours and love be mine love to God and neighbor love for prayer and gift and sign love came down at Christmas Temple on the Plaza, where diversity is praised and peace and harmony are the rewards. We were so close to having a white Christmas, except the temperature is just a little bit off, but it's still a beautiful day and it's wonderful to see you all here. We've got a couple of announcements tonight. For those of you who have participated in the past, it's an incredible, incredible experience. It's a candlelight service, and those of you who haven't come, I encourage you, bring your family members. If you're watching online, it's an awesome opportunity to come in and be Involved and be a part of something very, very special to end the evening beautifully and welcome in Christmas. So I encourage you all to come to that. That's at 6 p.m. tonight here at the temple. We also have the World Peace Meditation, which is going to be on the 31st at 1 p.m. And the World Peace Meditation Day is celebrated every year on December 31st. The aim of World Peace Meditation Day is to unite different races and backgrounds on a global platform. Special music will be provided by Sonic Savansanana Sound Immersion Symphony, which uses bowl and gongs to take you on a journey designed to awaken and invite the soul to shift, search, align, and surrender to a deeper connection with ourselves and with each other. It's going to be facilitated by Reverend Sandra and me with prayers by the leaders of various faith traditions. Now we're going to begin our service with the daily word, followed by the temple chimes and the opening prayer. The daily word today is joy. With joy, I prepare for the rebirth of the Christ within. Christmas Eve brings back memories of childhood anticipation. What's in the packages under the tree? What other goodies will there be there in the morning? Now I relish the anticipation of the joy my gifts will bring as I watch my loved ones opening their presents. This joy blooms in my heart as the Advent season draws to a close and I prepare to receive the most precious gift, the rebirth of the Christ within. I still my mind and become present. I contemplate the awe of the shepherds as they heard of Jesus' birth. I think the veneration of the kings who traveled to honor him. I surrender to my feelings of awe and reverence, preparing for joyous rebirth of light and love within me. From Luke 2.10, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Thank you, Connie, very much for doing that for us. This is the fourth, fourth week of Advent, 
and the word is love. And today we've got Christy and Iris Hoffman coming up to light the Advent candles. Who's got a lighter? We're getting creative this morning. We'll get this to happen correctly. No one has a lighter? No, I don't know. Lord have mercy. All right. No one smokers in here. All right. There we go. No, we move with absolute intention to express love is pulling together community to solve solutions. And so thank you all for that. Now we will begin our service with the temple chimes and the opening prayer. Recite this with me. On this day, we dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. We accept ourselves without harsh judgment and express appreciation for our individuality. We live without fear to meet the events of this day with confidence. We accept others without prejudice to experience a sense of unity with all people. We honor our earthly environment and recognize a oneness with all creation in harmony with ourselves, our lives, other people, and all of nature. We live this day with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. Thank you, God. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appears, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O goodness, we have a congregational hymn to sing. Joy to the world. Stand if you're able and sing along with the words up there.
Thank you, Peggy, and thank you, Robert. That was powerful, and thank you, Rory, for that opening and for being able to pinch hit and you know save the day. That was awesome. So I have a couple of things to share, but first of all, it's Christmas time, and it's so good to see all of you here today because Christmas isn't always fun for everybody. Some people's memories go back to times when Christmas was not, there were sad things that happened in their life, or maybe even today, their struggles. I wanna bring you some joy this Christmas. So there was a little boy. Well, there, first of all, there was a preacher. I come from the Baptist faith, so they're called preachers. So there was a preacher, and he was outside looking at the nativity scene that the workers in the church, the volunteers, like the ones who, the staff who decorated this beautiful sanctuary. So they had put up this beautiful nativity scene outside. And he looked closer and he noticed that the baby Jesus was missing. And just about that time when he noticed that, he looked up and saw a little boy pulling a little red wagon with what looked like the baby Jesus inside of it. So he said, hey son, wait, hold, hold up, hold on. Where did you get that Jesus? He said, I got it from the church. He said, you got it from the church. Why would you take Jesus from the church? He said, well, I prayed to Jesus that if he would bring me a red wagon, I'd give him a ride in it. <laughs> so <laughs> during our Bible class this morning, Reverend Laura Bennett, who was one of my first Bible teachers when I entered Unity School back in 1994, 
she shared something with us that I didn't know, a nice fact that you might not know. 800 years ago, today, uh, last, month. last month, Pope Francis of Assisi in Greccio, Italy, made the first nativity scene. It was a living nativity scene outside the church, outside the Catholic church. And they left the manger empty because Jesus was, hadn't gotten there yet. He had not arrived. We were waiting for the advent, the coming of the birth of Jesus. And so no one could play Jesus, so they left it blank. They left that part. Jesus wasn't in the manger. And people, rich and poor, came from all over, from far and near, to see this beautiful living nativity scene. Or this. And so I invite you today to take your time and take a moment, take a breath, and take yourself back to a time when you first became familiar with this idea of Christmas. And my question for you is, what is Christmas all about? What is Christmas all about? So I want to start with how many of you are visiting with Unity for the first time? Anybody? There's a couple. Never been to a Unity church before. May have come because someone invited you or you're curious. And I want you to leave with fewer questions and more answers. So I like to start with what is Unity? So we have five principles. We don't have any dogmas or creeds. Five principles. First principle is there's one presence and one power active in our lives, and as the universe, God the good, omnipotent. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, everywhere and in everything and in everybody. The second principle is we are inherently good because we are made in the image and after the likeness of good. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. The Spirit of God lives within each and every one of us regardless of how we act. So even people you don't like, you don't like their behavior, God is in them. They may not realize it. They may have an empty manger. The third principle, and probably a very important one, so I highlight it in red, is we create our experiences by what we choose to think, by the way we feel, by what we believe. I think I got an amen over here. What we choose to dwell on is a choice. We can decide what thoughts we want to dwell on or we want to focus on. Now, we can't control all the thoughts that come to our minds because we have eyes, we have ears, we can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can touch, feel. So we get confused by what we see, what we experience in the outer, but it's what's in the inner that counts. It's what we choose to think, what we feel and what we believe. And we believe that through the power of affirmative prayer, that is, denying what you don't want and affirming what you do want, in your life is how we connect with God, our source. Affirmative prayer. And you notice, if this is your first time, you'll notice we have a time of silence. We have a time of meditation because that's the time when you commune with God. It's not me talking to you. It's you communing with God. I do the same thing. I have to connect with that source as well. So we take the time in our service. I, ne I didn't have that experience growing up in the Baptist church. I didn't know, so the first time I came to Unity, and I was new, and we sat there and start and went into silence, and nobody was saying anything, and I was going, what am I supposed to do now? Nobody's talking. I'm used to ta lots of talking. The minister telling you what you're supposed to think and do and feel and believe, to where I had to go within and consult with my own inner Christ spirit. And the fifth and final principle is probably the most important. Knowing all these things, that's good. You know the four, the four other principles, great. But what do you do with them? It's about walking your talk. It's about living the truth you know. So the Bible, which we talk about in unity, I think that's the next slide. Maybe not. Okay. Oh, there. So we teach metaphysics. You know, I learned Bible very literally, but it's beyond the literal. Metaphysica is a Greek word for beyond the natural. So in the natural, we read scripture and we say, okay, this is what it means. But metaphysically, we say, wait a minute, there's a hidden meaning here. There's something else. How does this relate to me? The Bible is the story of the evolution of human consciousness. It's all of our story. From Genesis, which means our beginning, 
the word means beginning, to Revelation, which I always like to tell you, is not about the end of times. It's not about the apocalypse. There's a hidden meaning there. It's about when we have those experiences in life that catapult us to a higher level of thinking, a higher level of consciousness. That's a revelation. How many of you have had revelations? Yes. And when you do, it's like the angel of the Lord coming down in Luke chapter 2, which we'll talk about in a minute, saying, fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Christ child. What does that mean? The Christ in you. That's where it's birth. And so the daily word for today, which was read, the daily word was read earlier, is joy. The daily word for last Sunday was love. Love and joy go hand in hand. Love and joy are two sides of the same coin. If you have love, you can't help but have joy. So I'm going to skip past that daily word for today and just move forward and talk to you about the meaning of Christmas. This is the last of four Sundays of Advent. Advent means the coming. Something is about to happen. Something is on its way. I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be good. Something good is about to unfold in my life, and I'm looking forward to it. Children at Christmas time know that something good is about to happen. And they are looking. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could go back and be like children again and know that every single day is an advent, a coming, something good is about to break forth in our lives. And it starts from the inside out. We create our reality by what we choose to think, what we feel. How many of you are stressed during the holidays? Be honest. Raise your hand. Get a little stressed. You know, you, you don't know. You, oh, did you forget somebody on the list? Did you? Oh, my God. I I forgot to pick this up, I didn't get the whatever I was going to cook, I didn't get some sugar, I whatever. We run around like crazy trying to make this one day special when Christmas should be celebrated every day of our lives because Christmas is in our hearts. So I want to introduce you to a story that I think says it all in answer to that question. So how many of you have watched a lot of the movies during the holiday? That's how I de-stress. I watch Lifetime and whatever's on that really brings me joy and love and peace. Miracle on 34th Street, you watch that? Yeah. We don't end Christmas without watching It's a Wonderful Life. And a week ago, Connie, our chaplain Connie, Connie Dotson, who stood up and read the Daily Word, and her husband sent Rob, they, Connie sent me a picture and it was when Bob Altman was doing the movie Kansas City, and Robert was in it. Bob was, and so Connie sent me the picture of her and the of her and and Robert and the cast, and Zuzu was in the cast. Remember Zuzu? Daddy said, "Whenever a bell rings, an angel gets its wings." How about that? Thank you for sharing that with me. One of the classics that we always watch has been on television since 1965. Anybody know what that is? A Charlie Brown Christmas. Now, if you want to answer the question, what is Christmas all about? Watch A Charlie Brown Christmas. So I'm going to give you a little taste of it today. So here's what happens. Charlie Brown is angry because he can't figure out what is all the, me the racket about Christmas. He's stressed out. Everybody's running around trying to decorate. They're trying to buy the gifts. And he's going, there's got to be more to it than this. What is Christmas all about? And so he, he's relegated by Lucy to direct the children's play, the Christmas play. And nobody will listen to him. They totally disrespect him. They don't want to hear a word he says. Nothing he tells them sinks in. He's so upset. He's, now he's madder than ever about Christmas. He can't even direct a Christmas play. He says, I can't do anything right. So Lucy says, okay, this is not the job for you. Why don't you go, us, go get us a tree? Get an aluminum tree. Now, how many of you had an aluminum tree? I did. With the little color wheel that would rotate. Now, some of y'all young ones are like, what in the heck is an aluminum tree? <laughs> but it had a little color wheel, and it would change the tree's colors from green to red it was, and yellow. It was beautiful. So we had an aluminum tree. But Charlie Brown says, no, I don't do aluminum trees. So he went to the woods, 
and he picked up a twig. And it's a twig. And they laughed. They laughed hilariously. The Peanuts gang had a field day, because now Charlie Brown really made a fool of himself. Is that a Christmas tree or what? Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Brown was frustrated. I give up. I don't know the meaning of Christmas. I give up. Do it yourselves. So he runs away. And then Linus says, when Charlie Brown says, can anybody tell me what Christmas really means? And Linus says, and I have Linus. You can't see this very well, but here he is with his blanket. And Linus says, I can tell you what Christmas means, Charlie Brown. And then he breaks out into reciting the book of Luke in that textbook we call the Bible, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. I'm going to paraphrase and fast forward a little bit. And the shepherds were guarding their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared, and they were so afraid. Now these were very solemn people. They were shepherds. They had a flock of sheep. They were meditators. They were close to nature. How many of you like nature? They love to be out in nature. So they watched the stars. They watched the moon. They watched the sun. They were connected with the divine. And suddenly something really strange appears. Now let me see. You're outside. It's dark. You've got a bunch of sheep running around, and they're getting ready to be bedded down. And all of a sudden something strange comes out of the sky. What would you do? What would you do? Well, of course they were afraid. And the angel of the Lord said, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You will find the Savior, Savior in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, what would you do? Would you run the other way? You know, some people, when they see danger, they run toward it, and other people run away from it. Would you run toward it, not knowing what to expect? Was something dangerous? Was this real? But knowing they were close to nature and they were always listening to spirit, they were watching all the signs, they decided to follow the angel's directions. They took leave of their sheep and went to see where is this thing that is coming to pass. And when they got there, they fell down and worshiped this baby Jesus. So, How can a little twig bring you joy at Christmas? Well, the gang heard Linus telling the story, and they stopped laughing all of a sudden. They heard the meaning, the hidden meaning behind Christmas through that story in the book of Luke, and they began to see the value of what Charlie Brown, even though Charlie Brown didn't know the value, and they started singing. And they started praising God. It, took, it made a, a complete transformation in their minds when they heard the real meaning of Christmas. It wasn't about a Christmas pageant. It wasn't about the right song when he was playing Beethoven and Lucy said, you don't even know a Christmas song? He said, well, what's wrong with Beethoven? It wasn't about the gifts, although I will tell you that Snoopy, during the time that Linus was telling the story, had just won first place in a decorating contest. He had decorated his house with all these beautiful lights and baubles. And seeing his house decorated, he had some, he had some things left over. So the gang took the rest of his decorations and decorated the tree. See, we're gonna all come together in one mind, one consciousness. There's no limit to what we can create. But we're divided when we're looking at someone or something and laughing about it and not understanding that there is a hidden, deeper meaning. Every one of us, no matter what we're experiencing, there is a hidden, deeper meaning to your, whatever the challenge or situation is. When, like the shepherds, you turn within, not seeking answers from out here and other people, turn within all of the answers to everything you need to know is, are in you. So that story was written in 1965. 
Leo Mendelssohn commissioned Charles, uh, Charles Schultz to write the story, and then he commissioned um, Vince Giraldi to do the music, but there were no words. And Christmas Time is Here was written by Leo in 10 minutes. It aired on TV in 1965, and it has aired every Christmas season since then. The longest running cartoon movie in history. And yet, little known fact, Charles Schultz was a devout Christian. And his cartoons, if you look at the Peanuts gang, are always about something real in life. Something we experience, some social issue or something. And he pushed the envelope when it came to that kind of cartoons in his day. But Charles Schultz was told not to include anything religious in a Charlie Brown Christmas because they didn't want children, the themes of religion, to be in children's stories and in music. But Charles Schultz insisted that this is the same thing he was grappling with. He was himself struggling with what is the real meaning of Christmas. This year, according to what I recently read, Americans will spend $1.1 trillion on Christmas in food, entertainment, decorations, all sorts of things. And many of us doing that miss the real meaning of Christmas. It's not about how much you buy. It's not about how much you can get. It's not about getting the right present. On the Those are all good things because when we give gifts of love, we give the gift from our heart, I don't care what it is, it's received in the, in the intention, intention with which it is given. But the greatest gift is what Jesus came to teach all of us, to show us the way, is love. That song Peggy sang, love came down at Christmas. That's exactly what Jesus was born into the world to show us is that we have everything within us to live our lives abundantly. All we need is to be the love that we want to see in the world. Be the love. So Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, in that textbook that we refer to as the Bible, tells the story, our story, of how to give birth to a higher level of consciousness. And it's not just for Christmas Day. It's every day. So I'd like to get a little bit more into the metaphysical interpretation. Our mission, our assignment, is to discover Christmas within ourselves. We need to shepherd our thoughts. Make sure we're in alignment our thinking and our doing and the actions work together. You can be thinking one thing and wonder, why did this happen? Well, watch what you're thinking. As we sing before our meditation, our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is where? Always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. So you were, you were conceived in the heart of spirit. Many people argue that Christianity is not about um, certain people. People believe that some Christians maybe have a little different interpretation of what Christianity is, Christianity is, and maybe think it's just for them, or if you're different than they are, you don't fit. But I like Temple Hayes' definition. When I think about the birth of consciousness, and she defines, Reverend Temple Hayes defines Christian, she says, what do we say when asked if we are Christians? She said, in unity we answer yes in the practical sense. Remember, practical Christianity. And no in the traditional sense. We teach practical Christianity, meaning we apply the principles in which Jesus expressed himself as the Christ. That means you and I can express ourselves as the Christ. That was not Jesus' last name. We, the Christ is the higher level of consciousness. She goes on to write, and this book is called How to Speak Unity by Temple Hayes. She goes on to say, we practice these messages daily. We may be the only Bible that some people may ever read. So see, you are the story. That's why it's the story of the evolution of our consciousness. It's not about the things that happened 2,000 years ago. It's about us. We are the baby in the manger. We're in our infancy. We're learning how to be the love that we want to see in the world. 
She goes on to say, we practice unconditional love. That's what Jesus taught. Compassion. That's what the stories of Jesus are all about. Non-judgment. Remember the stories he helped people who other people did, thought were less than. They weren't supposed to be around, weren't supposed to associate with. Non-judgment, unconditional love and compassion, diversity and acceptance within all of humanity. She writes, we are all children of God, intimately divine, therefore none of us need to be saved. We need to know the truth of loving God and loving life. And at Christmas time is the ultimate time to practice that kind of love. So the Immaculate Conception, the virgin birth, it's all about us. It's that conception that we, when we reach that higher level of consciousness, we conceive a greater truth. And we walk differently. We talk differently. So what happens after the Charlie Brown story? Because that's what happened in 1965. So how has Christ been reborn in you? Jesus said in the book of John, 15th chapter, 11th verse, I have said these things to you so that, you may, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. It's all about love. It's all about joy. And it's all about loving yourself first. So I have a couple of slides. I might have to fast forward, Cassie, to a couple. Charles Fillmore said, love is the great harmonizer, the pure essence of being that binds together all of us. Imagine that, love is the glue that keeps us all together, whether we know it or not. Of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. In divine love, remember we say that in our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. That is divine love. And in divine love, love is a power that joins and binds in harmony the universe and everything in it. It's an inner quality that sees good everywhere, in everyone, and in everything. We can look for the good. There's got to be good somewhere. And it insists that all is good. And by refusing to see anything good, that, but good. Now let me say, that's not that you're ignoring or blind to reality. It's calling forth the good in every situation. There must be something good that's going to happen here. I'm going to look for the good in this. Maybe there's a lesson for me to learn here. This is a teachable moment. What can I get from this? That is good. When you get to that level of consciousness where you can look at a situation and say, there must be something good. We had a situation happen this week. We're getting all ready for Christmas, and my husband says there's water on the floor downstairs in the bathroom. So we go downstairs, and it turns out that our drain in the furnace room had overflowed. And it overflowed back to all the carpet in the back side of the downstairs, which is all finished, and didn't come to my office. But that meant once the, the uh, folks came out to work on it, unclogged it, now we've got water damage. And I'm thinking, it's just a few days before Christmas. And so, as it turns out, good story, they came out, they've been doing the environmental stuff, you know, cutting out walls, cutting out the new tile of the refinished bathroom. That was like, oh, hearing a jackhammer take you know, away that tile. But knowing that, it will be all taken care of, and it will be brand new. So we had to turn that fear around and look at what's about to happen. What is the advent? It's going to be a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. The shepherds took a journey. But we had to shepherd our thoughts and look for the good in that situation because what's about to happen is a whole new basement, a whole new family room. Now, it's going to take some time. I don't like shopping for stuff like that. We get into arguments. I don't like this color tile. I, you know, I, I don't like this kind of carpet. I mean, but that's okay. It's an advent, and it will be an adventure at the Campbell House. <laughs> but we'll get there. And that's what it is about Christmas. We'll get there as long as we keep Christmas, that love, in our hearts and take it with us wherever we go. So as I close, I want to give you this affirmation to remind you to keep the spirit of Advent alive in our hearts. Affirm this with me, please. All fear departs when I listen to my heart. The more love I give, the more I receive. My life is filled with kind, loving people. Let's stop for a minute and look around. Look around. 
if you don't believe your life is filled with kind, loving people, you're not in the right place. Because this is a place of kindness and love. Look at what's on our window. That's our, our statement. That's who unity is. That's who Unity Temple is. Charles Fillmore said, Unity Temple is the very house of God, a haven of rest and inspiration for all people. We're talking unconditional love. That's what this whole Christmas story is all about. Unconditional love. And so we continue with this affirmation. As I am, my life is filled with kind, loving people. As I embrace the power of love, my life is beautifully transformed. We were having hissy fits over that water in the basement, I'm going to tell you. It was not pretty. And, you know, it, it, we were just really, ups, it was upsetting because it was unexpected. But when the angel appeared before the, before the shepherds, it was unexpected. But when something unexpected happens, you've got to look for the good in it. Look for the God in it. There's always good. Love's wisdom is a, always available. And I am fully open to divine guidance now with joy I prepare for the rebirth of the Christ love within just remember there's no more shopping days this is Christmas Eve what's done is done but here's a good list for you to follow if you want some shopping suggestions each of you should have received a to-do list okay keep that handy my good friends sent that to me in my Christmas card uh, Reverend Karen Saunders, she said she saw it on the internet, and it's perfect. But I want to give you something else to add to that. If you still have shopping to do, here's what I want you to open to. If you're looking for something to give your enemy, forgiveness. If you're looking for something to give an opponent, tolerance. If you're looking for something to give a friend, your heart if you're looking for something for a child, a good example. Jesus gave us all those things. And most of all, the gift that you need to give to yourself, love and respect. And you have it all. So I ask you, what is Christmas all about? I want you to ponder that as we move into this time of meditation. I'll take a moment to get comfortable in our seats. Close your eyes if you feel called to do so. And take a deep breath in and fall into your heart space where God dwells. Christmas time is the time to bask in the illumination of joy and love. It is a time to grasp onto the magic of the holiday season that brings us all together. A season to give ourselves permission to hit the pause button on the hustle and bustle of everyday life, even for just a moment, and let love and joy rise strongly within us so that the essence radiates and permeates from soul to soul. This is also a time of rebirth. We take this time to go deep within us and connect with the Christ consciousness. 
and filter through and let go of the things that no longer serves us and start anew. A rebirth of the Christ within. We do this so that we may move into the new year with more love and joy. Let us take a moment to contemplate how this resonates with you as we go into the silence. And as we slowly and gently bring our awareness back into this time, into this space, as you move forward throughout your day, I invite you to take with you our daily word. And with love and with joy, I prepare for the rebirth of the Christ within. And so it is. Merry Christmas. come to that special time in our service where we give of our love offerings. If you'd say this with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive, and so it is. come a caroling among the leaves so green here we comes a wandering so fair to be seen love and joy come to you and to you glad christmas too and god bless you and send you a happy new year and god send you a happy new We are not daily beggars that go from door to door. 
But we are friendly neighbors whom you have seen before. Love and joy come to you, and to you glad Christmas too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. Sing along if you like. Here we come a caroling among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you and to you glad Christmas too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new Merry Christmas. As we come to the end of our service, thank you so much, Reverend Sandra, for the amazing, amazing service. And now we've got the children coming in. Are you all ready for Christmas? Yes. And you're an elf today. Not on the shelf? All right. You came off the shelf. You're an elf right here with us. Thank you for being here. And oh, my goodness. How are you, little Santa? <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> wow. Did you, what'd you learn today? Anybody want to share? I don't know if I have a mic. Uh, oh, Sandra. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what was the theme? I think it was love. I think it was love, too. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay, thank you. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Did you, what'd you learn? Love. Love. Family. Family. Kindness. Kindness. Oh, you got them all. Thank yep. you. All right. Gigi, right? And Azrael. And Lonnie. And what's his name? Demetrius. Demetrius? How are you? <laughs> Not sure about what that is. You uh, teachers have anything you want to share? We made gifts for birds, squirrels, and other animals. Oh, wow. ah. We made little feeders to show our love. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? You like to share anything? Um, nope, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll close our service with the peace, uh, prayer for protection and the peace song. surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well.